start with our today's uh, session it is it is uh, you know i'll start with basic questions so that you know in the beginning your confidence is boosted we start with the starting a poll for all of you hla is located on a very very frequently asked question and i really this is like a pre test for all of you to assess for me to know how much of immunology you are confident with so very very basic question and asked very frequently hla or mhc as we call it major histocompatibility complex is located i can see only 45% students getting it right it's very very easy guys only 45% means the rest 55% time to work harder very good shubham then we have desai dr r r kritika sai yash my plus subscriber students very good guddu tahir shri lekha ramya and moriza all right so what do we the answer is short arm of chromosome 6 that is 6p okay it is 6p hla is located on 6p please remember that uh, what do you have on short arm of chromosome 3 anyone short arm of chromosome 3 kya hota hai absolutely right priya very good vhl three alphabets vhl it is on chromosome 3 short arm 3p and what do you have on 5p 5p related kya hota hai yes absolutely right your cryo chart syndrome fap priya fap is located where fap is located where is it 5p or is it 5q it 5q your fap is on 5q familial adenomatous polyposis fap apc gene is on 5q all right so first question then you have the next question again a tester for all of you and here it goes incorrect about mhc1 complex does it activate cytotoxic t cells present on platelets activate cd4 positive t cells or present on chromosome 6p so these are just your testers as i said after this you'll see some more clinical questions all right very good shubham then ramya naved raksha and sheetal all right so yes mhc1 you just have to remember it's easy to remember uh, the multiplication should be 8 mhc1 is your cd8 mhc2 2 4s are 8 okay you just have to make the multiplication as 8 so mhc1 is recognized by or it's specific for your cd8 positive cells and mhc2 is for your cd4 yes it's a rule of 8 basically and we all know that your cd8 positive cells are those t helper cells or cytotoxic cells which cells are those cd8 are your cytotoxic those are your cytotoxic cells and cd4 are your helper cells we all know helper cells cd4 positive cells affected in your hiv right cd4 positive which is the hiv drug which acts on cd4 which anti hiv drug acts on cd4 very good it is your ebalizumab we have seen in the recent plus class where we revised anti hiv drugs ebalizumab okay so very easy to remember mhc1 cd8 restricted mhc2 cd4 restricted that's your rule of 8 so it activates cytotoxic t cells yes they are cd8 positive present on platelets yes and on all nucleated cells is mhc1 present on rbcs not present on rbcs because they are not nucleated not present on rbcs activate cd4 no cd4 is by mhc2 and present on chromosome 6p yes it is present on chromosome 6p it is present on chromosome 6p right next question okay so now i'll hear some clinical questions which have started so you have to really read the question fast develop the speed to read these questions i'll start a poll for all of you now this is a very very basic question conceptual question that is uh, being asked just that 
the way of asking this question is in the form of a lengthy question which you should expect in your upcoming exams so only 41 percent are getting it right seems like immunology naam sunke dar lagta hai is it so shubha maintaining the lead very good formal pants amazing ella then we have priya and chandra mitali dr vijayam yash okay that's great now as i always say lengthy questions the trick is read the question from the last line the best test to diagnose acute infection in the neonate would be a para parasite specific elisa for which isotype of immunoglobulin so even if i read the last line i can guess the answer and i'm able to answer the question i really need not waste time reading the first four to five lines so always in lengthy questions use this trick read from the last line read from the last line all right so now the question is that there's a 26 year old obstetric patient first trimester mein she becomes ill fever hai lymphadenopathy hai rising titer of anti toxoplasma so she has got toxoplasmosis then she delivers the baby and all which is the best test to diagnose acute infection in the neonate right the answer is igm absolutely right so now what happens is which immunoglobulin crosses the placenta this is your very very frequently asked question which immunoglobulin crosses the placenta yes it is your igg it is your igg so if you find igg up against toxoplasma in a neonate with a mother who had toxoplasmosis can you confirm you know can you be sure that this is the infection by the neonate you cannot be sure because it is the immunoglobulin which has crossed the placenta so from the mother the igg has gone to the fetus and that would be seen after birth as well so igg presence of igg is not confirmatory for neonatal infection it could be the passive antibodies from the mother it could be active antibodies as well we don't know but the immunoglobulin which is active for sure that is produced by the baby is igm because igm does not cross the placenta it does not cross the placenta so the answer is your igm antibody so always remember that you know igm antibodies for your any uh, vertical transmission of infection so neonate me check karna hai igm which is the antibody for your primary immune response again igm in your acute infections it is igm it is your primary antibody which is produced in your chronic infections it is your igg it is your igg i hope all of you know this so primary is m it is igm chronic is g c is g many times we have seen the mnemonic c and g alphabets they look similar so chronic is igg and acute is igm acute is igm in neonate it is igm all right it is igm now we have seen now since we are at toxoplasma so i remember discussing in the recent fundus uh, session that we had in our plus course what is the fundus appearance in toxoplasmosis very good headlight in fog appearance absolutely right there is headlight in fog appearance so if you are in my sessions you know that i jump from one subject to the other whatever i can think of related to it we jump from that right so headlight in fog headlight kiska hota hai taxi ka hota hai so imagine a taxi going in fog it has headlight headlight in fog is taxi that is toxoplasmosis where do you see your cottage cheese and tomato ketchup or pizza pie appearance cottage cheese and tomato ketchup or pizza pie appearance crvo nahi cmv cmv theek hai cmv so that is seen in cmv and what do you see in congenital syphilis and congenital rubella what appearance congenital syphilis and rubella salt and pepper salt and pepper appearance we have seen all of this right so that is about your toxoplasma that is about your toxoplasma the next question on your immunology here it is a lengthy question do not get afraid seeing the length of the question the more lengthy the questions that means the more conceptual they are okay so read the question i'll start a poll for all of you use the cheat codes that i have been sharing with you all the while
So guys, we have already had one entire session, two sessions on immunodeficiency in PLAS course. You can watch those two sessions. Ek mein theory discussion hai, ek mein MCQ. We have one free class also before in your Khan Banega MD series. So please watch that as well. The non-subscribers can do that. All right. So Ella is leading, then we have Priya, and then we have Shubham. Probably Shubham took longer to answer this. Uh, Sai Pradeep dates, I need to check uh, which dates are those. Uh, I'll let you know, okay, on the Telegram group. Now, read the last lines again, as I said. Read the last line. The nitro blue tetrazoleum dye reduction test and neutrophil oxidative index are negative. This itself gives away the diagnosis for sure. This gives, gives away the diagnosis. Nitro blue tetrazoleum and neutrophil oxidase negative means this is normal or this is abnormal. It is normal or abnormal. It is abnormal. The positive test is normal. So basically these tests, nitro blue tetrazoleum and neutrophil oxidative index, they are checking for oxidative stress burst in the neutrophils, generation of free radicals. So it is not happening. The free radicals are not getting produced. So basically it is your NADPH oxidase deficiency, which is seen in chronic granulomatous disease. So topic aims or your INICT will definitely ask you a question on primary immunodeficiency disorders. Very, very favorite topic. Please watch those sessions before your INICT. All right. So uh, now uh chronic granulomatous disease so easy way to remember is easy way to remember it is chronic and it is granulomatous so remember that your chronic helps you to remember that you use color test for chronic granulomatous disease which color test your nitro blue tetrazoleum test and which is the other test a blue color ho gaya, a rhodamine wali test hoti hai. Jo bhi test hai, I don't go into the details because this suffices for me to solve the questions. So blue color and red color, color wali test hai. It is granulomatous disease. So granulomas, you will see. What forms granulomas? Do neutrophils form granuloma? What forms granuloma? Do neutrophils form granulomas? No. Your macrophages basically form granulomas. So what does it tell you that the macrophages are coming into play? That means your neutrophils may problem hai. Neutrophils may problem hai. Matlab aapka jo oxidative stress hai, wo gaya hai. So your neutrophils are abnormal. Oxidative stress gone. That means there is oxidase deficiency. Which oxidase deficiency? NADPH oxidase deficiency. So the two most important points, they help you to identify this. Other very, very important point. Other very, very important point. The organisms, uh, you know, which are seen, the infections which are seen in your chronic granulomatous disease, C for C, which organisms? Catalase positive. They are catalase positive organisms. So if you see in a question, these are your catalase positive organisms. So you have Staphylococcus, Pseudomonas, Candida, all of these are catalase positive. You have Aspergillus, which they can give you in the question. Enterobacteraceae family, these are all your catalase positive. Now, can someone tell me why catalase positive? Why catalase positive organisms, they manifest in this patients? Why are these common? Why catalase positive? Tell me the concept. So in your neutrophils for your organism killing, you have various mechanisms. One is your NADPH oxidase wala mechanism. Other is your myeloperoxidase wala. You have lysosomes wala. As a multiple pathways hai, to kill the organisms. Ek nahi to dusra. Hai? So if there is deficiency in NADPH oxidase, so this pathway is gone. So that is why your MPO, myeloperoxidase and lysosomes will come into play. Now for myeloperoxidase, the substrate on which it acts and produces your free radicals causes damage to organisms. The substrate itself is your substrate is your hydrogen peroxide. Absolutely right. It is hydrogen peroxide. The enzyme which degrades this hydrogen peroxide is catalase. Catalase degrades this hydrogen peroxide. So when you have organisms like Staphylococcus, Candida, Pseudomonas, 
which produce catalase they degrade the substrate for h2o2 so what are they doing they are knocking off this mpo system as well that is why the catalase positive organisms are seen uh, infections are seen lysosomes is not that efficient to kill the organisms okay so i hope all of you have understood the concept why other way round it is opposite if there is a patient who has only myeloperoxidase deficiency problem what is the symptomatic do they are they generally asymptomatic or they have severe symptoms very good formal pans so generally they are asymptomatic why because even if myeloperoxidase is gone you have nadph oxidase which is a stronger pathway in place so your organisms will all be you know looked after by nadph oxidase so remember that mpo deficiency is asymptomatic while your cgd more so is with catalase positive organisms so this question helps you to remember catalase positive staphylococcus pseudomonas candida aspergillus right all of these are catalase positive is it clear with everyone this question so it is your nadph oxidase deficiency nadph oxidase deficiency all right so let's go to the next question let's go to the next question here it is okay i'll start a poll for all of you now here it goes so i am very much sure that all of you have read this ntt just that you know the way the questions are asked if it is different we tend to get confused so let me share the leaderboard only 20% very good norel absolutely right govin amazing govin is here then we have desai kiran dr vandana amit preeti and shrileka have got 5 on 5 correct very good so shubham did you get this wrong it seems look at the question again let the question i read it from the last line what is the most likely defect i don't understand anything from this nitro blue tetrazoleum dye reduction test is normal that means the oxidative stress happening is normal so there is no nadph oxidase deficiency now there is the child has age normal numbers of cd19 positive cd3 positive cells in peripheral blood and an extreme neutrophilia what is cd19 a marker of what is cd19 a marker of cd19 is your b cell we have taken a class on plus course in cd markers as well and we'll discuss in upcoming sessions as well cd3 is a marker for your t cells right and there is extreme neutrophilia this is the catch point here whenever you see extreme neutrophilia and a child with recurrent bacterial infections so it is your leukocyte adhesion deficiency it is your leukocyte adhesion deficiency problem always the catch point to diagnose this would be what are the clues the pointers to diagnose this now when you have leukocyte adhesion deficiency so as the term says there is a problem in leukocytes getting adhered to your blood vessel wall and then coming out of the blood vessel to the site of inflammation or infection so that is why this infection or inflammation is not getting stopped because the leukocytes are not coming out of the blood vessels so in the blood vessels you will see huge number of neutrophils but wo koi kaam ke neutrophils nahi hai only the number is more but they are not serving their function so basically they are not achieving their goal so it's like you know having all the resources but then still you are not achieving your goal does not serve your life's purpose right so basically yes there is defective adhesion defective migration chemotaxis that is gone so that is why you have neutrophilia in the blood you have many neutrophils but they don't come at the site of inflammation they are not serving their purpose so at the site of inflammation they are not coming that is why there are recurrent bacterial infections so neutrophilia is very important and yes absolutely right geetu so since the neutrophils are not coming there is no pus formation at the site of inflammation and you also get history of your 
uh, delayed cord separation umbilical cord separation in the neonate is delayed that is very very important delayed cord separation delayed cord separation okay so you can remember that for your cord separation you need your leukocytes which are not coming and that is why there is delayed cord separation so it is your absence of cd18 in your leukocyte adhesion deficiency so we remember it as leukocyte adhesion adhesion is rhyming with 18 okay 8 adh 8 and 18 so remember leukocyte adhesion deficiency cd18 you have to remember okay cd18 you have to remember very very important that is your leukocyte adhesion deficiency i'm not going into the details of types of lad type 1 type 2 type 3 we'll discuss it some other time in details and i've done in the plus course as well all right so the clue was here extreme neutrophilia extreme neutrophilia was the clue here let's go to the next question this is very interesting and i'm really looking forward to see who gets this right So only 29% students getting it right. Guys, you, uh, we really need to work on immunology, it seems. So let me share the leaderboard, all right. So Govind, amazing, Amit, Dr. Vandana, and Desai Kiran, the four students have got six on six, very good. Now, what is? Is it membranous or is it membranoproliferative? What is it? Now look at the question again. Further lab evaluation is most likely to show presence of which of the following antibodies. Next line, if the last line is not serving the purpose, you have renal biopsy shows subendothelial immune complex deposits with granular immunofluorescence and tram track basement membrane uh, splitting. So for students who have missed a session, I've taken on renal pathology with mnemonics, a free session link. Once you download the PDF after the session, uh, you can directly go to this link of renal pathology. There we had discussed tram track appearance of basement membrane is seen in tram track do words hai to do words wala aapka glomerulonephritis which is membrano proliferative so do not get confused between membrano proliferative and your membranous okay membranous is more of nephrotic syndrome mpgn is both nephritic and nephrotic here you have your tram track this gives away the diagnosis of membrano proliferative okay membrano proliferative two words so two words membrano proliferative there are subendothelial deposits granular immunofluorescence what does granular immunofluorescence tell you it is your antigen antibody complex immune complex deposition basically it's happening it is not only antibodies, it is immune complex deposition, which gives granular immunofluorescence, right? Now, the other things which are mentioned here, now still this does not serve my purpose. I can take a logical guess reading only this much as well, but let me read more. Now, there is a 53-year-old man, three-month history of non-pruritic rash, fatigue, decreased urination, pruritic papules on the trunk and extremities that do not blanch when pressed. Serum creatinine elevated, urine analysis, RBC cast, so glomerulonephritis and proteins. Complement levels are decreased. Okay, complement levels are decreased. So what do you think is the diagnosis here? Tell me, what is the diagnosis here? You have a patient with nephritic, membranoproliferative, glomerulonephritis and papules, rash. All of these are seen. Amazing, Ayushi. So that is your mixed cryoglobulinemia. It is your cryo globulinemia your mixed cryoglobulinemia right and we know that your cryoglobulinemia is very often associated with c4c your hepatitis c virus it is 90 percent of cases are associated with hepatitis c it is your mixed mixed cryoglobulinemia okay so this is your hepatitis c virus hepatitis c virus that is why you should check for anti-hepatitis c antibodies so the take-home point from this 
cryoglobulinemia is important for your mcqs very very important so remember that cryoglobulinemia c for c associated with hcv always test for hcv antibodies we read in the questions it presents with your papules non pruritic papules on the trunk and extremities on the trunk and extremities they do not blanch on pressure they do not blanch on pressure so if you have papules then it is your uh, papules with kidneys affected papules on trunk and extremities that is your uh, that is your cryoglobulinemia is it clear with everyone where else what else can you think of papules or skin lesions with kidney manifestations in children very good hsp hsp henna henna shonlin purpura now where do you see the image classically that they give you of the skin lesions what image do they give you for the skin lesions classically asked in one of the recent neat pg exams yes so it is your extremities buttocks and your lower limbs basically so buttocks ka denge image they will show you papules or glomerulonephritis ki history rahegi that is your hsp hsp may which immunoglobulin deposition which immunoglobulin deposition again a frequently asked question it is iga it is iga right absolutely right so we have seen all of these in renal pathology please revise that free session it will help you a lot where do we see anti dna topo isomerase antibodies anti dna topo isomerase very good scleroderma so you have anti scl70 scleroderma scleroderma anka antibodies now your anka antibodies we have seen in which type of glomerulonephritis kaun sa type mein aata hai membranous membrano proliferative uh, diffuse proliferative rpgn right basically yes type of rpgn so remember your anka antibodies they are associated with rpgn rapidly proliferative not membrano proliferative hepatitis c is cryoglobulins and anti desmoglobulin we saw in one of the recent sessions inict expected questions yes pemphigus vulgaris and pemphigus foliaceus anti desmoglobulin you have pemphigus vulgaris we said we had a question kaun sa desmoglobulin most important rehta hai pemphigus vulgaris mein anti desmoglobulin 3 yes the most important is anti desmoglobulin 3 and in your pemphigus foliaceus it is desmoglobulin 2 or 1 dsg1 right it's your dsg1 in your foliaceus both of them pemphigus will cause your flaccid bulla pemphigoid is deep in dermis it causes your tens bulla so you will have that history in your question theek hai so read the clinical history to help you come to the diagnosis next question all right